Now, we will not cover the general case of a varying force. We will cover the case of a force whose direction is constant, but whose magnitude varies. So, the direction is always pointing to the right, but the magnitude varies by this function here. So, f without the arrow refers to the magnitude of f, um, and that magnitude is given by 2x plus 3. You can see that the particle starts at x equals 0 and ends at the point x equals 10. So, the particle moves in a straight line from 0 to 10, and we want the work done on the particle by vector f. So let's suppose that we wanted to get the force on the particle, say, at x equals 6. Well, the direction is to the right, because we said that the direction is constant, it doesn't change. But what about the magnitude? Well, we just have to plug 6 into this formula here. 2 6s are 12, um, plus 3 is 15. So the magnitude at x equals 6 is 15 newtons. If we want the magnitude at x equals 0, when the particle starts moving, we just plug 0 in here, you can see that f of 0 is 3 newtons. Now, it's incorrect to multiply the force by the distance, because the force keeps changing, so it doesn't mean anything. So what force do we use for calculating the work? Well, what we have to do is consider increments of the particle's motion. Tiny increments of length dx. Well, actually, to be more accurate, I should say delta x. So delta x is a tiny increment of the particle's motion. So when the particle gets to here, it has traveled a distance delta x. So that we consider a general point x on the path of the particle, and we look at a point a distance delta x from it, and we get the average work done by the force over this interval. I say average work because delta x we, we, we haven't taken the limit as delta x approaches zero. Delta x is some very small increment, but we need to take limits at the end to make the average work the instantaneous work at point x. So what we need to do is to take the component of the force at x in the direction of motion. Well, I've made things simple. The component of the force at x in the direction of motion is just the force itself, because the force that component is the force itself force is pointing in the direction of motion, just for simplicity, but it will work if the force is pointing at some other angle to, to the direction of motion. Um, okay, so how do we get that? Well, we know that we need to plug whatever x is into this here, and, and we get 2x plus 3. So the magnitude of this force is 2x plus 3. Okay, so this is the magnitude of the force on the particle when it is at point x. So the particle is here. And here's the force vector. So in general, we are taking f of x and multiplying by delta x. Okay, later we'll calculate this. We'll put 2x plus 3 in for f of x. Now, we imagine doing this for every increment of length delta x. Every increment running from x equals 0 to x equals 10. And we imagine summing all those uh, little works done. So we're summing f of x times delta x from x equals 0 to x equals 10. So that's the average work done. But if delta x, we haven't taken the limit as delta x approaches 0. Only then will we get the exact work done by the force. By the way, the word average in this, uh, this line here is used a bit loosely, because it depends on the size of the increment delta x. But anyway, if we want to get the work done on the particle by force f um, for the journey, straight line journey from x equals 0 to x equals 10, we have to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of this sum. So the summation symbol, the sigma, becomes an integral sign. Delta x becomes dx. So we need to integrate our function with respect to x from 0 to 10. So notice that this integration method makes sense. See, we are multiplying the force by 
the tiny distance dx and force times distance has units newton meter or joules so this thing will work out to be to have units of joules of course then we have to sum all those contributions anyway um, f of x is 2x plus 3 we have a simple integration problem here um, so you know you add 1 to the power to get x squared divide 2 by 2 to get 1x squared integrate 3 gives us 3x plug in our limits 10 squared is 100 plus 30 that gives us 130 joules and the work done by this force is positive because you can see that this force has a component in the direction of motion so this force f contributes 130 joules of energy to the particle's motion.